It began with small things, like frequent wall knocking, footsteps walking around my bedroom, not coming up from my friend's apartment above me. I hear this stuff a lot, so that's not really a concern. Yeah, it's a little creepy, but it doesn't bother me. Not nearly as much as what else I'll list. This one time, I was with my friend sitting in my room, and my mom left 15 minutes prior for an appointment. My friend and I were chilling on the bed, and we heard three loud knocks on my bedroom door. And she asked if it was my mom, and I was like, yeah, and I told her to come in. But she didn't answer, because my mom wasn't actually there. I had gone to open the door in case she didn't hear me, but there was nobody there. Another time, I had another friend over, and I went to get us some water from the kitchen, and I heard her saying something. So I said, one second. I was like one room over, so I wasn't more than 15 feet away. And I came back and asked her what she had said. And she looked at me and said, I didn't say anything. But it was so clearly her voice. She's not the type to pull pranks. She's a teacher and we're really close. And she knows I get super freaked out. So she wouldn't do anything like that to freak me out. I was on FaceTime with my friend one time. She's from Norway. I had my laptop on the desk facing my bedroom door. I left the room to get something from the kitchen and ended up having a conversation with my parents for four or five minutes. I came back and she said that my door was swinging open and closed. I have this jewellery box from when I was a kid. You know, the ones with the ballerina or fairy and it plays a little, little classical sort of tune. She said she had heard that music while the door was swinging open and closed. I was sufficiently creeped out. I've had other instances where I'll be on FaceTime and one of my friends will hear or see something while I'm in another room or not paying attention. Another time, I was laying on my bed and I felt as if something had slammed onto my bed from underneath. The whole thing shook. Most of the time, it's just knocks and footsteps inside the room I'm in. Things will move around. Pretty basic. Maybe a month or two ago, I was sitting in my mom's bed watching a show. Both my parents were in the kitchen and I saw a tall black shadow figure pass through the hallway into my bedroom. I was so freaked out, but I was sure it wasn't going to harm me. Now one of my friends can see, hear and communicate with spirits, etc. And my ex-girlfriend, who I just recently broke up with, is someone who can sense and feel when there is something present. I was walking with the two of them to the front hallway. And when we passed by the living room, they looked at each other and said, you saw that? They said, yeah, but I didn't see it. They told me it wasn't a harmful spirit, just a man who probably used to live here. Mind you, whenever something happens, my dog notices it too. And her ears perk up and she'll be looking in the direction of the noise or whatever is moving. Now, by far the creepiest thing that's happened to me was a month ago, maybe a little more. I was taking a video of myself for TikTok and I felt my hair get tugged. I didn't think anything of it until I rewatched the video and I saw a lock of my hair get pulled away from my head. I live in a terraced London townhouse where the walls are extremely thin and you can hear every creak throughout your house and in the houses on either side. Over the summer, I was left to house sit my parents' house, and so was home alone for around a month and a bit. Over this time, I'd been spooked a few times by the neighbours walking up their stairs in the middle of the night, and various other creaks and bangs. But there is still a distinct difference between the volume of noise from the houses next door and my own house. Not once did I genuinely think something was in my house. On the last night before my parents were due to come back, around 2am on FaceTime to my boyfriend, I heard what sounded like someone walking up my lower flight of stairs. I told my boyfriend to be quiet so I could listen. I noticed it was louder than what I'd usually say was the sound of my neighbour's stairs, but I ignored it. Until... I heard the unmistakable sound of my parents' bathroom door creaking open and slam shut. 
and the sound of a tap being turned rapidly on and off with the water hitting the sink. In my house, you may be able to hear the neighbours move about, but you can't hear their water running. My boyfriend said he couldn't hear anything, but after seeing the look on my face, he advised me to call the police. I don't spook easily from ghosts or spirits. I just genuinely believed someone was in my house. A week before, a neighbour told me to make sure to lock my back door as there had been a few instances of burglary on the street. I immediately thought that it could be a predator or burglar that had stalked out my house, noticed it was just a small young woman on the property and decided to break in, and that I'd stupidly forgotten to lock the back door or a window or something. The police come within minutes and I'm literally shaking as I open the door, like quivering. They storm the house yelling police and check every single room and possible signs of entry. Coast was clear, no perverts or burglars, and every window and door was locked, meaning no one else was in the house. I was so embarrassed but thanked them as they left. One male officer asked me as he walked out the door, do you believe in ghosts? I responded that I didn't really. I hadn't even considered the possibility of ghosts at that point. I was fully convinced I was under threat from a human being. The living are a greater threat than the dead, as my grandma always says. I then remembered the tap running on and off in my parents' bedroom. I went to check and there were a few droplets in the sink, as if the tap had been used recently, but not for a few minutes, meaning none of the police officers would have used it. I fell asleep fine that night, more just annoyed at whatever it was that made me so scared I had to call the police. As a kid, I was moved around a lot. The sixth house was outside of a small town called Beaver Lodge. It was located far back from the road and the driveway was a kilometre long. The tree line behind our house was off limits as it was full of muskeg that in the past had swallowed up cattle and a tractor. We had 10 acres but only had access to two. The house was previously owned by drug dealers so from day one it had an eerie vibe. The first incident happened during the winter. I began having horrible nightmares and waking up in a cold sweat. This happened the rest of the time we lived there. The next thing was early in the morning. As I waited for the bus, I heard a very strange squeal and then a loud crash. I bolted back to the house and ended up missing the bus. The third time, myself and my older sister were babysitting our three younger siblings. We had put them to bed around 7.30 and then started watching movies. Around 9pm, I went upstairs to check on the two younger siblings. They were fast asleep. I settled on the couch in the basement with my sister and continued to watch a movie. Then all of a sudden, we heard frantic thumping as if someone was running up the hallway above us. Then one of the doors slammed shut. My sister and I looked at each other and proceeded to head up the stairs. We peered down the hallway, terrified. Our parents' bedroom door swung open and then slammed closed again. We bolted down the stairs and stayed paralysed on the couch until our parents came home. I have more stories from this house. Let me know if you want more. The place is in China, while I was there for a tour. During a visit to a place which is famous for its tea, Longjing tea. The tour guide brought us to a famous well which strangely until today, I've not been able to Google and heard of. The well, unlike a usual well, it's only barely surrounded by any wall or stone barricade to stop people from falling in. The guides showed us the well and its strange phenomena. A ripple created on the water would not cease to stop. I'll just keep going. Shortly after playing around with the well, we moved on to an area not far away from the well. But that's where the strangest thing happened. I saw another tour group around the well and one of the guides is standing in the well as though it's a short puddle, which is ankle deep, jumping up and down while beckoning me over to join him. 
Just as I was stepping into the well, someone grabbed hold of my arm and said, what are you doing? And I was like, I'd like to join them and turned over towards the well with no one in sight. I didn't let my parents know about this, but did tell my mother many years later. Recently, I saw a ghost documentary about a farm in the US, which is haunted. In the story, there's a well hidden below its floor with the same property, a ripple which never stops. This happened when I was in college and I couldn't figure out any explanation. This happened in Portland, Maine, and if any city is haunted, it's there. The whole city was burned down more than once and it just has an eerie feel. My roommate and I were leaving our apartment for a couple hours to go work on a school project at night. We said bye to my cat who was walking around the kitchen and locked the door. We always locked our door because we live in a sketchy area. A couple hours later, we came back. The door's open. Immediately, we're freaked out because we both remember locking it. We slowly step inside and don't see my cat, who always runs to greet us. We hear him meowing and we find him shut in my roommate's bedroom. He was definitely out when we left. The next thing we noticed, the most terrifying part, is our magnetic whiteboard, which was on our fridge, was in the middle of the kitchen on the floor now. Earlier, I had written a list of all my homework on it. So it said drawing, painting, sculpture, etc. And it had some little doodles on it too. But now everything on it was erased except the word pain from painting. I took a pic of it, but I can't find it. Now we're panicking. We first think someone broke in, so we call our guy friends who live down the road and they rush over with knives to search through our apartment. Nobody's there. Nothing is stolen. Stull, Kansas, is notorious for an old church and cemetery said to be haunted. I live 10 minutes max from Stull and drive through it all the time. All of us do. Some people believe the hype. Some have used internet information to debunk it. Doesn't matter to me. I don't know what to believe, but I know what happened this particular night. Friend and I driving, 2 or 3 a.m. Stull is set away, out on some winding roads in the country, and I'm terrible with directions because I never had a car till I was 20. I'm 25 now and getting better. Cruisers like this for me are destinationless because I'm always lost. Car has old locking brakes, I'm pretty sure. So we were driving and a dog or deer ran out in front of my car. I slam on the brakes on the gravel and we skid sideways on the road to a halt. As we do so, the figure floats down the ditch of the road, up the other side and over the fence, disappearing. On the other side of the fence, a large hill on what I assume is the old Stull Cemetery. One not easily found from the main roads. Due to the winding roads and the properties being blocked off with gates here and there, somehow I had managed to skid to a complete stop in the dead of the night, in the middle of nowhere, because a ghost had run across the road. And there she disappeared into the cemetery. And we got the whole ass entire fuck out of there. Believe what you want. I'm 27 and have very, very few freaky experiences like this to recite. But this is the real deal here, folks. I have nothing to gain. I don't know any of y'all. I'm just a corn-fed Kansas boy who shit his pants on a dirt road. When I was a child, I used to see ghosts in our old apartment in Manila. Mostly were just blurry figures of a person that is just passing by. But one night, while I was late at night watching TV, I saw a man standing on our stairs. The man's wearing all black, and I can clearly see his face. I could even see that he's a skinhead. He doesn't look menacing. He's just looking. But I was so scared that I peed my pants. I told my mom about it, but she wouldn't believe me. 
My dad at that time was a delivery driver, so I barely saw him. We moved to another town after a few years. Decades later, while we're reminiscing about our life in Manila, I told my family how I used to see ghosts in our old apartment. My dad was shook and told us he used to see ghosts too. He asked me why I didn't say anything. I said I told mom, but she wouldn't believe me. My dad said he used to see a black figure of a man on our stairs whenever he came home from work. My younger brother told us that also that he used to see the same black figure around our house. Then I told them I could see him clearly and describe how he looked. My dad told us the reason why he had to do a blood sacrifice of a chicken ritual is because of the ghosts he sees. He thought he was just too tired from work. And then he told us the history of that apartment and who he thinks that ghost is. Few years before we moved to that apartment, there was a tenant who committed suicide by hanging himself on the stairs. He was a nursing student studying for his licensure exam and he rented that apartment alone so he could focus. But due to the pressure from his father, who was a military man and beat him, he decided to end his life. Ironically, I'm now working as a nurse and my brother is in the military. We didn't know his story until this year. About 15 years ago, I was at my best friend's house at night, which had a huge garden and a gate that was the main entrance. We were talking normally, smoking a cigarette, sitting next to the main entrance. This is difficult to explain and English isn't my first language, so I'll do my best. The gate had a translucent and orange glass window, so you couldn't see who it was if someone knocked on the door. Only their silhouette and the shadow of their feet below the door. At a certain point, we see that someone stopped at the front door on the street side outside the house. But the funny thing, we didn't see their silhouette. We only saw the shadow of their feet. We froze because it was extremely rare, unless it was a child. But what was a child doing in the street at 10 p.m. at night? So my friend went to the gate and crouched down to look under the space under the door. Do you know what happened? The shadow of that person's feet ran out and we never saw the shadow or the silhouette. At that moment, we were more surprised than scared. So we dropped the topic and moved to the other side of the garden to continue talking. And here begins what I usually do not want to remember. At one point, my friend was silent looking at her cell phone and I just kept smoking my cigarette looking at the wall where my friend was leaning. And that's when I saw it, clearer than day. The shadow of a child, very clear, well-defined, passing as if it had walked in front of us. Guys, it was a kid. The shadow was so clear that I couldn't have imagined something like that. As it happened, it disappeared where the wall ended. I instantly told my friend, girl, I just saw something horrible. And she refused to talk about it with me. She said, don't say anything, let's go inside. Since that day, I'm convinced that there is something, something beyond our understanding and that, above all, they're not always seen. Sometime later, my friend told me that she found toys lying around her house that hadn't even belonged to her. So, yeah, I met the ghost of a child. So there are some things going on in our house. We've owned the house for four years. I've always felt uneasy about our bedroom closet. I've kept that door shut because it gives me the creeps when I have to get up and pass it to go to the bathroom. First on experience, heard three heavy steps come from the closet towards my bed. I wasn't asleep. It scared me half to death. Second on experience, we have a very old grandfather clock that hasn't worked for years. It's not wound. It hasn't been working. Weights are at the bottom. My husband and I were eating lunch in the kitchen and the grandfather clock all of a sudden struck 12. 
third on experience, we heard my stepson's very unusual cackle laugh from upstairs. He was out of town and not here. His laugh is very distinct. My husband and I both heard it. Fourth on experience, we had a friend over, a heavy glass flew across the bar without any of us close to us. It hit our fridge with such force, it dented our refrigerator in three different places. Wigged us out, but our friend more so. He doesn't want to visit anymore. Fifth odd experience. I was the only one home besides my dogs. We were all downstairs, and I had distinctive footsteps walking upstairs. Sixth odd experience. At 8.25 tonight, my husband and I were sitting around watching Parks and Recs with sleeping puppy dogs. We're downstairs. We heard an incredibly loud noise. It literally sounded like someone jumped off the bed upstairs or fell hard on the floor. My husband investigated every room and every closet and checked to see if anything fell. There's nothing we have upstairs that could fall and sound that hard that we have on any walls. The pictures are still on the walls. I started to get scared. Any clues on what on earth could be doing this? Ghost? Demon? I was on my way to work, just as normal as any other day. Same time, same route, same music, same coffee. Almost made it there too. In all honesty, I don't remember what made me drive off the road and into a ditch, totaling my car. I don't remember the crash. I swear to this day I made it to the next stop sign and got behind a black Dodge Challenger and made the next right turn behind it. It must have been an out-of-body experience because my car and I were in a ditch 20 to 30 feet before that stop sign. Fast forward, I woke up in the hospital, disoriented and confused. I'd never been in a hospital bed staring at the ceiling before, so I guess I was asked the routine questions, do you know where you are? My smart ass always having something to say, it's not heaven, I probably wouldn't be going there. Hospital? Do you know why you're here? And for the love of all that's good, I couldn't remember one single bit of it. I legitimately thought I made it to that stop sign, didn't even know I had a car accident. Now what happened? Is there anyone you'd like us to contact? I didn't remember that I was married, much less remember the name of my spouse. But it was at this moment when I looked up and saw at the foot of my bed, three large shadows. There was one officer at the window to my left, two nurses on my right between the bed and the wall, and the doctor was at my hip to my left. I asked, why so many people? The doctor said the nurses had to be there, and the cop had to do a report. I pointed at the shadows at the foot of my bed, but they were gone now. The doc confirmed, there's nobody there. Still dazed and confused, the officer, now standing at my hip and the doctor at the foot of the bed, told me I was in a car accident. So I asked if there was anyone else injured. People in the other vehicle, walking pedestrians, God forgive me if I hit an innocent animal. Lord knows we have deer, fox and bunnies in the area. No, just you. It was just you. I'm a person with a good heart, so maybe it was the relief that I didn't hurt anyone else. I started to cry. The officer kindly wished me a speedy recovery and made his way out. I wiped my tears, opened my eyes, and like the worst jump scare in a 3D movie, there was an old man in my face repeatedly saying, Help me! I froze up. I felt my heart skip a beat. Hair stood up on my arms, legs and neck. I sensed my blood pressure drop and the heart monitor made its noise. Trying to evaluate the situation as best I could, as quick as I could, I looked around. The nurses who were to my right were gone. I must have missed the moment they left. To my left was the old man in full body apparition. It wasn't just him. There were four phantoms asking me for help. Three male and one female. They all had clothing like the kind you would see in the Civil War history book era. The nurses rushed in because of the beeping machine attached to me and I passed out. When I woke up, 
there was a surgeon telling me the extent of my injuries, which I don't feel are relevant for this writing, so I'll leave them out. I asked him to send up the hospital priest, who tried to press for information as to why I wanted the priest, but I simply told him I wanted someone to pray for me. Again, I passed out. The time lapses between passing out and waking up were never clear to me. When, when I woke up again, the priest was there with me. He stood to my right in plain clothes, asked why I wanted him there. I asked him to close the door. After he did, I told him everything I saw. The shadow people, the old man, and the three with him asking for help. I asked the priest to pray for any lost souls, to bless the room I laid in, and to bless me with holy water. He told me he understood my concern and would pray for me, and come back to check on me. I spent another three weeks laying in that hospital bed, passing out and waking up. After making a full recovery, I've gone back to the hospital to visit the cathedral and thank the priest. I don't know if the prayers by the priest helped. I can only hope they did. After spending a few years living abroad with my father, I returned to my native country. I was ready to start my adult life, from zero, from my mother's guest room. I was then in my early twenties. She had recently moved into a new apartment. The building was newly built on the edge of the city. It was nice, high ceilings, large rooms, quiet neighborhood, though on the edge of the bad side of town. Rumor is, that the area used to be known for prostitution, drugs, and the occasional dead body, until this new building came around. Given my experiences and boredom, mostly boredom, I decided to try to see if I could connect with anyone. Stupid me. I drew up a flimsy Ouija board on paper and used my own gold ring as a pointer. Didn't look worthy of making contact with the bottom of a garbage can. It's a Ouija. It doesn't have to look special. If it's meant to make contact and something's there, there's a chance you just might. And you may not like the results. I spent two minutes drawing the letters, the words yes, no, goodbye, and probably ten minutes talking to what I thought was nothing. I'm very impatient. I asked typical weird questions. Hello? Is there anybody here with me? Are there any spirits who would like to communicate with me? and so on. Never getting any response, I said goodbye, tore up the paper, and that was the end of that. Or so I thought. Days went by, and little things started happening. I felt as if I wasn't alone. I started seeing shadows in the corner of my peripheral vision. But being who I am and having had the experiences I've had, I didn't think much of it. It didn't scare or faze me one bit. Days became weeks, weeks became months of this, and with the time, my paranoia settled in. As this time I was struggling to find work, and being a burden to my mother took a toll on both of us, stress levels in the home were consistently growing. There were occasions when I would hear kids running just outside my bedroom door, so I'd get up, open the door, and there'd be nothing there. I'd be as quiet as possible to see if I could hear kids at all. Nothing. I'd run outside, no kids, no movement, silence. At this point, I knew what was going on. I knew I opened a gateway for someone or something to communicate with me. This is why I don't believe that saying goodbye after ending a session will close or end communications. It's bullshit. If something wants to communicate, it will. Many times I'd be asleep in bed and wake up because I felt someone pull my leg. Nobody there, but I'd have a big bruise on my leg. These just kept getting more and more intense. On one occasion, I got caught off guard. I was just getting out of the shower. The bathroom doorknob jostled as if someone was trying to rush into the bathroom. I froze, looking at the doorknob. I knew I was alone. And so there's now hair standing up on the back of my neck and goosebumps down my spine. And immediately after, I heard a little girl laugh as she ran away from the door. For a split second, my heart stopped. 
I snapped myself out of the stunned scare and flung the door open. I tried my best not to emit any sense of fear and tried to shrug it off. I put on music with a happy tone, got dressed and played my favourite video game to take my mind off what had just happened. Soon after this occurrence, I found work, which was a bit of a relief. It meant I didn't have to be in that apartment as much. I worked long hours, I came home, slept, woke up and went back to work. The leg pulls, bruises, shadows, it all continued. Not daily, but it did. I said enough in the morning I woke up to see little red claw marks on the wall and ceiling. That was the signal to get out. It looked like something with three fingernails took an uppercut swipe at the wall and also skimmed the ceiling in one swing. I went to get a chair to get a closer look. Think of an oversized cat's nails leaving crayon marks. This was before Facebook existed, so taking a picture wasn't something easily accessible. From that moment, I began to work the idea into my mother's head that she deserved an upgrade in life. So I got my boss to help find a place closer to work, and that was that. A month later, we were out of there. Lucky me. Whatever it was, it didn't follow. As far as I know, my mother never experienced anything. She never seemed out of the ordinary, and I never told her. This is from many, many years ago. She's since died of natural causes. She lived for many years after we moved out. May she rest in peace. I don't know exactly how old I was. Too young to know much about death, if anything at all. I'll try not to make this drag out too long while providing proper detail. A boy in my class had passed. How? I don't know. And my mom took me to the ceremonies. It was one of those where they had the funeral services and then the burial immediately after, because it's all on the same property. For some reason we were late, so I didn't see the boy in the casket. We made it just in time to accompany everyone else outside to the burial grounds on foot. The slow walk had me bored, so I started playing tag with one of the other kids. I didn't recognise him at the moment as my classmate. He had on a sailor suit and seemed happy to see me. I remember that after a while, my mother called my name, came running after me and grabbed me by my arm, scolding me. I told her I was just playing with the boy, but now he was gone. What boy? Stop lying. Behave yourself. Blah, blah, blah. A young man, probably early 20s, intervened in my mother's lecture. I don't remember the words verbatim, but it was him asking, What boy? You're the only kid here. This got more people's attention, including that of an older lady, and her attention drew a crowd. She turned out to be the boy's grandmother. The young man and the grandmother insisted on knowing what little boy. They told me calmly to look around, and repeatedly told me I was the only child there. The grandmother asked me to describe the boy. When I mentioned his sailor suit, it rang a bell. The 20 year old said that the little boy they were burying had a sailor suit. Then the grandmother agreed. Everyone began talking among each other in a worrisome excitement, trying to figure out what was going on. I was confused about what was going on. The grandmother asked me if I would recognize the boy I was playing tag with and had someone else bring a picture. I couldn't recognize him though and scared that I had done something wrong. I didn't answer. The grandmother ordered for the coffin to be opened. A yelling lady protested, I'm guessing his mother. But in the end, they, guessing again, groundskeepers, raised the coffin above ground level and got it opened. They asked me if the boy laying there was the boy I was playing with. This is probably why I remember this so vividly. Fucking traumatised. Anyway, then I saw the boy appear again, holding his grandmother's hand at the other end of the coffin. Then just as quickly as he appeared, he was gone again when I looked up at the grandmother to tell her he was right there holding her hand. My mother escorted me away from the coffin. In the meantime, the coffin was closed again and began to be lowered. The grandmother reached in and gave me a hug and a flower, told me to throw it into the grave. It took me a minute to react, but I did. 
Then, my mum had me say goodbye to everyone and we left early. Years later, my mother still denies this ever happened. It's something both my dad and I do where we seemingly skip around in space-time. I've even got eyewitness confirmation of one of these events. The earliest I was made aware of this phenomenon was a story dad told of when he and mom were first dating. They lived in different parts of town and he could pretty much only go one way from hers to his. After dropping her off one day and heading his usual way home, he's suddenly in a different part of town heading the opposite direction. All my life, my dad had a habit of disappearing. And not in the I'm going out for smokes kind of way, but in the you can walk past the chair he's in four times and only see him once kind of way. It's the more concrete examples that blow my mind. One time, I was busy cleaning my room when I suddenly heard dad screaming frantically. He had apparently been looking for me for 30 minutes, screaming and yelling the whole time, freaking out. At one point, he was even in my room. We would have both been standing in the center of my room. Neither of us could see or hear the other. Same week, I'm laying in bed, actively listening to the TV show my parents are watching downstairs. Without a word, mom gets in her car and leaves. She comes back with takeouts and says she got me whatever because I wouldn't answer her. She even told me she turned the TV all the way down, thinking I couldn't hear her. From my perspective, that never happened. The volume never changed. Recently, in the apartment my girlfriend and I rented together, she witnessed my shifting. I was washing dishes when she pulled into the driveway. I waited a minute before going to the door to greet her, except she wasn't there. Assuming she must still be in her car, I left the door cracked and went back to finish the dishes. No sooner than I had turned around, she was coming in the door behind me. I asked her about what happened, what she saw, and she told me she saw the front door come out while she was backing into the driveway, not after. It's like I perceive time as linear, but I don't always experience it as such. It also seems to happen more frequently as I get older. The other night, I let my dogs out in the backyard so they could run and use the restroom. Like an hour later, they're barking like crazy. My dogs normally bark, but generally only if there's a person or another dog. And even then, the barking they were doing the other night sounded really aggressive. Like they were fighting something or were scared. I went to let them in as I didn't want them to wake my mom, who was sleeping upstairs. I didn't really think anything of it. Until tonight at dinner, when my mom told me she had been awoken by the dogs. She told me that she went to the window that looks out over the backyard to hush the dogs, which she saw something in our backyard. She described it as having an Afghan wolfhound-like body, but with shaved hair, and moving like a sloth, but faster. On a whim, I showed her a picture of the old creepy paste of the rake, and she agreed that that's what it looked like if it had blonde fur. The sloth movements also reminded me of a story I'd heard about a Wendigo and how they had puppet-like movements. She told me that after the dog started to growl at it, the thing awkwardly maneuvered its body up the back fence into the park behind our house, up a few houses to the right where another neighborhood dogs was before retracting and going to the empty plot directly to the right of us, and seemingly disappearing. A few other important pieces of information that might help. I live in an area that is situated just outside the town, but it has a pretty dense forest surrounding it that is fenced off due to being military property. The plot next to us is a drain area that's covered in thick, tall grass. This also isn't the first time that we've seen something strange in our neighbourhood. Family and guests always say they see several shadow figures along the streets, 
and my sister and I once saw a very weird deer at the park. To go more in depth about the deer, it was young without antlers and was very light coloured. My sister and I went to the park where it seemed like it had gotten stuck and couldn't leave. The park is fenced in since it belongs to the school. Once we entered the deer started running straight at us, but then changed its mind and left the park like it hadn't been unable to moments prior. We watched it for a little while just to make sure it didn't get hit before walking up the hill to our house and it started following us again. It could be nothing. It's just weird behaviour for the deer in this area who will usually run away the second you even turn towards them. It was also strange that such a young looking deer was by itself when usually the mothers can be found with them. I'm not saying it was a not deer or anything but my sister and I had joked about it at the moment as we're both avid cryptid fans. That all happened like a month ago and the only reason I bring it up now is because its appearance at night would look a lot like the creature my mother had described. Ever since I was a small child, I've always dealt with paranormal experiences. It seems like no matter where I move, there's always paranormal shit waiting to happen. Whether it be shadows in the corner of my eye or things flying off shelves for absolutely no reason. As previously mentioned, I had experiences that ranged from items flying off counters or moving in front of me, all the way to hearing my name called by three different voices in the middle of the night while I was home alone. Voices that I've never heard in my life. I recently moved in with family members due to COVID. Almost immediately after I moved in, all types of different occurrences began happening in this house. As silly as this sounds, every time I speak of these ghosts or whatever they are, technology all around me begins to malfunction. And only when I speak of them, for example, my TV and computer monitors would freeze or just straight up shut off by themselves. They're both no older than a year each. I tried to test the phenomenon by chatting with a good friend on the phone. We were chatting for 50 or so minutes. We were chatting about family. No problems whatsoever. Once we hit the one hour mark on the call, I started chatting with him about activity I've witnessed in the past. Sure enough, the call dropped. Dropped, not ended. I called back, continued on with my story. Sure enough again, the call dropped again. This process happened approximately 11 or 12 more times. After the last time, I left my room to go ask if any of my family members were experiencing technology errors. Apparently, I was the only one. When I mentioned I was telling a good friend paranormal experiences I've had in the past, my mom went and put an open Bible in my room. After that, my calls stopped dropping. Just for the record, I normally have amazing internet and phone service. For the next three days while the Bible was in my room, the living room just outside my bedroom had things fly off shelves and counters almost daily, even when I was home alone. When I removed the Bible after three days, the activity seemed to calm down. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to see things calm down, but there's rooms in my house that my dog absolutely refuses to enter. I've always assumed maybe I'm just bad luck, or perhaps maybe someone that disliked me passed away. But to this day, I have no idea. I just keep telling myself quarantine might just be taking a mental toll on me, but my family has witnessed things falling too. There's so much more I'd like to type, but at this point, my iPhone is lagging so bad it's taking two seconds for every letter typed. If anyone has any opinions or advice, I'll be happy to reply to everyone. This is the second time it's happened in the last six months or so. About an hour ago, 12.30 at night, I was in bed and my cat, who almost always insists on sleeping at the foot of my bed, woke me up amongst the midst of severe nightmares I was trapped in. I don't usually have an issue waking up when I have a bad dream, but two times I haven't been able to wake up on my own 
I don't know what it could be. It started as an awful dream, pulling someone away from jumping off a building, trying to kill themselves. And when I eventually woke up, I would immediately fall asleep again and onto the next nightmare. I didn't have the strength to wake myself up fully, but I could feel my heart racing as each one was progressively getting worse and worse, to the point I was dreaming about running and hiding from something with people I'd never met before and hearing footsteps closing in and sudden screaming. Then I could hear my cat Jones meowing repeatedly, loud enough it shook me out of the nightmare and he wouldn't stop till I hugged him for a while. He calmed down but suddenly stood up, looked across the room and stared at nothing for a moment and then looked at the other side and started again. I haven't been able to sleep since, but Jones has calmed down and fallen asleep, so whatever it was, he's gone now. Early this year, my friend's sister passed away. I've known the sister for a long time and found her friendly, outgoing and charismatic. She always stood up for herself, but in a way that didn't make you feel like she was attacking you. So about a month ago, my friend had a girls' night and we hung out at her mother's house. As the evening wore on, they insisted that I stay the night. They offered me the sister's room, but said if I felt off about it, I could sleep elsewhere. I said that the sister and I always got along fine. She didn't scare me, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind. Sometime during the night, I woke up when I felt the room temperature drop, and I got chilled. Well, I'm in my 50s, and thanks to menopause, it has to be really cold for me to get chilled. Then I felt a cold presence next to the bed, and I knew it was the sister. I heard my friend from the other room ask if I was okay, and I told her that her sister was in the room. She told me to tell her to go away. I said that this was her room and she had every right to stay, and that I didn't mind sharing. Then I felt her lay down in the bed next to me. It took a while for the chill to dissipate, but I eventually fell back asleep. The next morning, I told my friend and her mother what happened. My friend said she doesn't remember that conversation with me, and that I might have dreamt it. Her mother, on the other hand, believed it, and was very happy that her baby girl had joined us for the girls' night. My mom was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in 1999. She was stage 4 and doctors didn't give her much hope to live past 3-6 to six months. They started her on an aggressive form of treatments including Rituxan. She responded well and went into remission in December 2000. About 3 months later, she got a really bad sore throat and relapsed. The cancer was back and more aggressive than ever. Fast forward to October 2001. My mom didn't come to work at our shop one day and wouldn't answer the house phone. I went to see her after work and the door was locked. She finally came to the door and was confused and dizzy. I rushed her to the hospital where we were told her cancer had broken the blood brain barrier. She was admitted and I was told she maybe had a few weeks to live. She had lost her ability to speak to me but she knew who I was. They tried an experimental treatment and it worked for a few days and she was speaking and very aware of her surroundings and me. I knew it was going to be over soon and she even said, I've raised you right and it's time for me to go soon. My dad had passed a few months before suddenly and it was the worst year of my life. I came to see her the next day and could hear her talking in German and thought one of her friends was visiting. I came into the room and no one was there. I asked her, who are you talking to? She said Papa and started giggling. I said, yeah, okay, and sat with her. The next day, she had a massive seizure and almost bit her tongue off. They had to place a stint in her mouth, then place her under anesthesia to stop the seizures. She passed at 5 a.m. on November 2nd, 2001. I was comforted by the excellent nurses in the hospice and told them she must have been losing it because she was talking to herself. The nurses looked at each other and said she did it all the time. 
She would have full-blown conversations with someone for hours on end. They asked her who she was talking to and she said, her dad, and that he'd be seeing her soon. Problem is, her dad was killed in w- World War II, Holland, on November 1st, 1944. The nurses also told me they thought they heard a man's voice in her room at times, but when they entered, no one was there and she had a huge smile on her face. I miss her dearly, but I know she's in a better place, free of that misery. I really appreciate all the feedback I got. So much of it was heartfelt, positive and warm. I always get a bit melancholy around the time of her death anniversary. Writing this story makes me feel a bit better about the whole thing, and I hope it helps others cope during the holidays a little bit better. Now to what I experienced. I think it was maybe around three years ago. I remember it was winter because it was really cold and snowy outside. I was left alone in my family's cabin while we others went Christmas shopping for food and last minute packages for some friends or something. I don't really remember why they went out, but that's not important. My point is, I was all alone in our cabin, playing some games on my phone while listening to some music on the radio in my room on the first floor of the cabin. I remember that I suddenly got cold and went to get a blanket that was on our sofa. Just as I was about to get up and grab the blanket, I saw some kind of shadow in my side vision. I didn't really care that much because I thought that maybe it was just my imagination playing a trick on me, because I didn't really like being alone in general, and especially not in a cabin on a mountain in the middle of winter. I got the blanket and went back to my room to play some more games. About one hour passed, and I'd forgotten about all the strange shadow, but when I saw it again, this time it stayed in my side vision for about three to five seconds before it went away again. I got a little creeped out about it since I was the only one in the cabin at the moment. Therefore, I decided to lock the room to my door. Right after I locked the door to my room, I heard some kind of crying upstairs on the second floor of the cabin. At first, I thought it was my little sister who was about three years old at the time. She used to cry a lot and I asked out loud, what's wrong, did you hurt yourself? I heard her answer, yes, I feel while playing with my dolls. Can you come upstairs and help me? I unlocked my door and headed towards the stairs when it finally hit me. I was alone in the cabin, so whatever the fuck was upstairs could not be my little sister. I sprinted out of the cabin wearing only a t-shirt and my dad's slippers, and it was freezing cold outside. I stopped running about 150 meters away from the cabin and looked at it from a distance. In one of the windows on the second floor, I could see a shadow just standing still, and I got the feeling it was staring at me, even though I could not make out any eyes. I stood there outside of my family's cabin in the freezing cold for about 30 minutes and cried until my family finally arrived. My mum and dad asked me what was wrong, but I didn't want them to think I was crazy, so I just made up a story. I don't remember what I told them, but they seemed concerned about me. One thing I remember is that I talked my mum and dad into driving me to my grandparents' cabin, because I refused to enter the cabin. Ever since that day, I refused to join my family when they go to our family cabin. It's really hard to explain, but the feeling I got that day in the cabin can only be described as not wanting, like someone or something wanted to harm me. And I have nightmares about the shadow figure thing, even today. It's haunting my dreams. So this took place at my cousin's old house when I was seven and my cousin was six. My whole family was there and they were all outside getting drunk, so no one was really paying attention to all the kids. There were five kids there at the time. My cousin and I thought it would be fun to try on her old Halloween costumes, so we started running upstairs and when we got to the third step, we bumped into something and we were thrown down the stairs. It literally felt like we bumped into a pole and then got pushed off the stairs. So we were laying on the ground, hurt, 
trying to process what just happened. But we thought we just slipped or something. So we stood up and looked towards the stairs and saw a ghost standing on the third step. The ghost was standing very formally and didn't move a muscle. I don't remember much except that the ghost was dressed as a pilot. And the most vivid part I remember is his shoes were extremely shiny. Me and my cousin screamed like we were getting murdered. And my other cousin, Jay, 11 at the time, rushed from the kitchen and asked what was going on. We couldn't word a mouth. We were terrified. Jay looked up at the stairs and saw the ghost and screamed. My mother ran to us to see what was going on, so we explained what we saw, and she thought we were just messing around and went back outside. Three years later, I was talking about it with my two cousins who also saw what I saw, and they said that they didn't remember that at all. I was confused and terrified because I knew that it actually happened, and I was curious as to why they didn't remember what happened. Three days later, I was still staying at my cousin's house, and I saw the ghost in the kitchen, but my cousin Jay didn't see him, so I brushed it off and we went back to her room. That was the last time I saw him. Last year, I was talking to my cousin M, Jay's sister, and she said that her great uncle was a pilot and died when I was about four, and we think that's who I saw. That experience still terrifies me to this day, and every time I tell someone, they don't believe me. In April 2020, my partner and I sadly lost a son at 17 weeks gestation. I had an infection in my uterus, which was undetected, and after several days in hospital with some worrying symptoms, I went into premature labor. I was also septic, so after delivering our boy, I was very unwell. To say it was tragic and traumatic would be an understatement. We named him, and for the purposes of this post, we'll call him H. At the time, my older son, A, was two and a half years old. Too young to really understand anything except that mummy was sick in hospital. We haven't purposefully not told him about H. We will in time, but there was no reason to confuse him at such a young age. We don't talk a lot about H at home. H is not a name that is familiar to our older son for any reason. Around July this year, I was driving A to a Saturday morning activity when he said, Mummy, you should meet my friend H. He's here in the car with us, and pointed to the ceiling of the car. I didn't want to overreact or ask too much in case he felt the need to make things up, so I simply said, That's good, eh? Is he a nice friend? And he said yes. I told my partner, and we both had the same reaction. Weird coincidence, but also, kids have imaginary friends often. Not a big deal. Next day, A told my partner that H is here when they were playing in our lounge room. My partner asked, oh, okay, where is he now? And A pointed in the air to the corner of the room, above where we kept H's ashes on top of our bookshelf, and then said, he's like an astronaut, he can float in space. A few days later, when my partner took A off to childcare, I gave A a kiss and hug as I always do at the front door. A then turned to his left and enthusiastically said, Bye H, I'm off to school, before running out the door. By now, my partner and I are just looking at each other in amazement. Over the next few weeks, this happened several more times. Sometimes A told us that H is asleep, so would stay in the car if we arrived at our destination. A also told me that H was in hospital, not an astronaut anymore. This time freaked me out a little as, of course, the only time we could hold H was in hospital. Our only memories of him physically were in that setting. But mostly, these visitations felt special and a bit magical. The final time H visited, that we know of, occurred in the car again. Just A and I. He told me, H is here with us, mummy. And curiosity got the better of me. I asked, A... Is H a man or a little boy like you? And he said to me, with a tone like I really should know this already, No, mummy, H is just a little baby. 
Sometimes I can hold him. And he cradled his arms like he was holding a small baby. That was absolutely an oh shit, but also a wow moment. I was raised agnostic atheist, so it's all a bit overwhelming to ponder on too much. But we have decided it was H just letting us know he's okay, and with us still, somehow. A few weeks later, I found out I was pregnant again. I like to think H was here with us through the early weeks, and is still with us still. Always a special part of our family. I do believe young children can see things we can't explain. I'm so glad A had this chance, though we most likely won't remember it. I'll just get to it. This happened a few months ago. My folks wanted to renovate my old room I used to sleep in when I lived with them. I went to help them out during the weekend with the renewal and all went smoothly. We threw away the old beds and furniture and gave them a fresh coat of paint. Since we threw out the old bed, I had to sleep in a different room. My mom offered for me to sleep on the couch, but I refused since it's very uncomfortable and I'm quite a large guy. So I decided I'll sleep downstairs. For context, the house is two stories. A ground floor with a guest bedroom, used to be my grandmother's bedroom, but she passed away. And a second floor where we basically used to live overall. Very rarely do we ever go to the ground floor. The floors are connected by stairs which are on the outside. There are no stairs on the inside. So I said goodnight and went down to the guest bedroom. I grabbed a snack and put on a TV series to watch. This goes on from about 10pm till 1.15 to 1.30am when I decide to sleep. I start drifting off to sleep when I suddenly hear a knock on the window. Three knocks like someone is asking if anyone's there. The knocking was very faint however, so I thought that it may have just been normal house noises or just the wind since I was sleeping on an open window. About one to two minutes passed after the first knocking, and it goes again. Knock, knock, knock. I start getting a little anxious at this point, so I stand up and listen. A couple of minutes after the knocking, there's this inhuman growl from outside. It sounds like it's coming from the edges of the backyard. Then another couple of moments of silence, and then it knocks again. Now at this point, I'm starting to shit bricks, and this happening repeatedly It knocks, then growls on the other side of the backyard. So I text my girlfriend to try and share this with someone so I get some stress off me at least. She tells me to record it. I made four recordings, and from my phone, I couldn't hear anything. The sound stopped after about 30 to 40 minutes. It wasn't easily falling asleep after that. The next day, I woke up to see if I could actually hear anything in the recordings. I enhanced one of them and caught the growling. This happened maybe two years ago and was without a doubt the most terrifying thing that has ever happened to me. Me and my at the time roommate were just finished working out. It was about 8pm and the sun had already gone down. After walking out of the gym, we decided to do a couple laps at the nearby stadium before we went home. Nothing obscure happens on the way there, but once the stadium comes within view, we realise the floodlights are turned off. This didn't deter us, as we were pretty certain we could run in the dark either way. We went to the bottom row of seats to leave our gym bags there. As we are placing our bags, we started hearing it. It was whistling, coming from the top rows right above us. Not only was the very fact that someone was sitting in the dark the entire time unnerving, but the very whistling itself was bone chilling. I don't know if I can explain it properly like this, but it was three low pitched whistles, then one higher pitch, then one lower pitched and then it would repeat. It sounded like whatever was making it wanted us to come to it. We were thoroughly unnerved, so we whispered to each other to grab the bags and then jog to the other side of the stadium and get out. We took our bags and started jogging, and almost immediately afterwards, the whistling stopped. 
As I could hear nothing else but our feet stomping on the ground and heavy breathing, I just figured it had grown bored and went away. Just then, I started hearing something. I could hear a third set of feet running behind us. My stomach dropped as I realised whatever that was, was running towards us. Our adrenaline kicked in and we started booking it to the exit. As we were getting closer to the exit, I could hear it again, whistling, but this time, ten feet away from me. We made it past the exit and out on the streets, and we didn't quit running till another block down. We stopped to catch our breaths and whatever was chasing us had quit at the stadium exit. Only me and my roommates know about this story. We've never really talked about it. That whistling is still the most disturbing thing I've ever heard in my life. Today, I, 19 male, was feeding the cat when I realised I had already experienced the exact moment like it happened months ago in a dream. I've experienced sights like this countless times and I'm wondering what's up. It's always an experience that lasts for say about a minute and I immediately recognise. I'd understand it if my dreams were based on my current situation and in the short term future, but between the dreams and the situation really unfolding usually is months. I remember vividly dreaming about someone I only knew from the face being on the soccer pitch, with me shooting a ball at the opponent's goal but missing by maybe a metre. Our club plays within a pool of teams within the region, so usually 14 to 16 matches are against teams you play against every year. However, the opponents in this case were wearing uniforms I didn't recognise. I didn't think much of it when that same player and I were scheduled to be on the same team. We did pretty okay and were allowed to continue in the cup when I realised our opponents had the same exact uniform on as the one in my dreams. Sometime in the second half, the situation unfolded completely like I witnessed before. I'm not sure about the paranormal and I don't even know if this would be the right subreddit, but does anyone know something about this or experience something similar? I know it's called deja vu, but I can't find a scientific explanation. It creeps me out sometimes, and it's come to the point where I believe I don't really have a free will, and everything is completely set in stone already.